I'm back. Bluntly. Down on the ground. One is you need to do everything local, even if you think globally. It means that you don't have to have a networked strategy. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Growth be considered as a panacea concerning the development. Economic growth in the Congo is on the paper, but it's not the reality. This is um, evidence especially among students, people who are graduating, you can see... It may be strong, but people who are dealing with it, this is the problem. Or white people are not... Bluntly, we even say your money. From time immemorial, nobody has eaten omelette without bringing eggs. That's why you have to polish up economic strategies in order to skyrocket. Do you have any ideas about economic development and welfare? Join us in this program. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Everything is under control. Keep in touch. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Bluntly is well done. Bluntly is very nice. In DRC, bluntly is an obligation. Bluntly is exciting. Bluntly is my passion. Whatever you are, what bluntly? Blankly with Anissa Yomoranya. Sing to Blankly. English is the reality in DRC. Blankly, Blankly and Blankly. Everything is under control. Hello everybody, welcome to the program. Bluntly, bluntly and bluntly. Everything is under control. Everything is definitely under control in this program. Today's bluntly is really unappealing. Today's bluntly is unprecedented as we're going to focus on something vitally important. The importance of insurance in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's why I'm not alone today. Right here and right now, I'm going to introduce to you my guest. The first one, Lindsay Domingi. Hello, Lindsay Domingi. How are you today? Very yeah, for the first time on Bluntly TV show. You are the country managing partner of Ernst and Young. Yeah. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Good. Very Would you take a seat? Thank yeah. You. Thank you. And uh, we have Valerie Safarian. Yes. Hello, Valerie. How are you today? Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Very yeah. Happy to meet also you. for the first time on Blandly program. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Are you ready to get the message across? Certainly. On Blandly. You are the director of Orbis. Indeed. Yeah. Well. Thank you. Would you take a seat? Yeah. Wherever you want. And we have Jean-Luc Kamba. Hello, Jean-Luc. How are you today? Oh. Yes. You are Congolese, Congolese. for the first time on Blandly as well. I <laughs> came from Rumba. I'm delighted to see you here on Blandly. Are you willing to, to speak Blandly? Really? Yeah. Yeah, you are risk manager of uh, Jacamine in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yeah. Thank you take a seat there. Thank you. And we have uh, Rupert Wetterings. Hello, Rupert. How are you uh, today? Very yes. Well, how are you doing? Yes, I'm good. Yes, you are new markets manager of... Uh, I see assurance. That's correct. Yeah, in Democratic Republic of Congo. Yeah. Very shortly, we, we, you're going to. Well, no? we, we hope shortly to be present. Good. Yeah. yeah. Would you take a seat? Thank you. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Everything is under control. Everything is definitely under control in this program. You know, insurance is something vitally important. We cannot move the country forward without putting a particular emphasis on insurance in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Don't forget that bluntly is the only Congolese broadcast where you can find joy, hope, and inspiration for a better future. Bluntly is doubtless reaching the cruising speed. But what's going on about insurance in DRC? Find out. In September 2012, the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, submitted to the parliament a bill of law on the insurance code for discussion and adoption prior to its promulgation by the head of states and publication in the official gazette in accordance with articles 100, paragraph 2, and 130 to 137 of the DRC constitution. During the period starting from 1885, the year of the creation of the Congolese states, formerly known as Etat Indépendant du Congo AIC, until 1966, the insurance sector was dominated by foreign companies from Belgium, France, Holland, Great Britain, and Canada, such as, for example, Charles Lejeune, Imoaf, Bose, Begold, etc. Some years after the independence of the Congolese states, the Congo decided to set up a public company known as Société Nationale d'Assurance, SONAS. Despite the fact that SONAS did not perform well, its monopoly status remained unchanged until today, making it hard for DRC or foreign companies to operate in the insurance sector in a country as big as the DRC with a population of over 65 million. However, it is obvious that the insurance sector plays an important role in the emergence of modern economies. 
This is the reason why the DRC government drafted this bill of law on the insurance code with a view to liberalize the insurance sector, which generates a lot of incomes. The preamble of the bill states that the bill of law on the insurance code is one of the most important measures taken by the government in order to modernize and liberalize certain economic and financial activities of the country. In fact, the legal security is one of the major concerns of the investors and the prerequisites of the economic development of the country and to the improvement of the citizens' living conditions. The insurance's activities are part of the competitive sector of the economy and therefore it is not recommended for the state to play a predominant role in such a sector. However, the state should set forth the conditions in which no companies, including mutual insurance organizations, may be authorized to operate in this sector. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would like to start with uh, <laughs> uh, Valérie yes. How are you today? Very good. Thank yes. you. How can you define insurance? Well, insurance is uh, basically covering each individual or any company from risk that uh, we are facing and taking uh, each day of our life. Uh, insurance has a social role in our society. Insurance is also, has also a role in preventing uh, claims to happen. Yeah. Uh, so I define insurance not, not uh, only as a crucial financial sector uh, in an economy, but also as a, a very important player in the in the social life of our society. Do you prevent claims to happen, as you're saying? Certainly, you do certainly. I mean, insurance companies are done to make profits. So yes. if they can if they can avoid a fire to happen and give advice to clients yes. in order to to prevent uh, those uh, those events to happen, definitely that's the role of an insurance company and a and a good broker. Yes, in countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, where insurance is not really known for somebody who does know anything about insurance. What's the best definition? How well, can you know? well, what is the best definition uh, for a, for a, a good uh, a good father uh, of a, of a family is basically uh, pre protecting uh, his family against uh, accidental risk, against uh, sickness. Uh, uh, taking taking an insurance uh, for uh, healthcare insurance is protecting the family in case somebody would get uh, sick yes. and needs to go to hospital and be hospitalized. Well, that insurance would cover all those expenses. Yeah. So that's the first example that we could explain to the people who are, would not get used with the insurance. For, yes, for in example. DRC, you know, things are not really clear about that. Do you think that? Uh, I know, that, hope. I know that, but I, I do believe that today, we, our team today, we, yes. we will make sure that everybody understands uh, the importance of insurance. Importance, yeah. That's great. I'm very happy. Thank you. And uh, I would like to ask a question to, you know, uh, how many types of insurance do we have worldwide? Types of insurance, but I think uh, basically uh, th there can be different classifications. Uh, one of them is, I mean, what are you trying to protect? You're trying to protect assets and you're trying to protect uh, people. Yeah. Uh, now, traditionally, we distinguish between life insurance yeah. and non-life. What well, non-life insurance is really also called property and, and casualty insurance. So, yeah. so life insurance, I think, is quite clear what it means. Uh, it's uh, insuring against the the risk of death. I mean, it's not that you're going to stop people from dying necessarily, yes. but when so the person, but when the person dies, yeah. uh, there would be some financial compensation, for yeah. example, for, for their family. Mm. Uh, the property and casualty insurance is, for example, uh, for the risk of car accidents, for the risk of fire, yes. risk of disasters due to the weather, yes. for example. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you also have health insurance, which uh, may or may not be seen as, as a separate category. But, okay. I mean, but these are the categories, but the reality is you can insure uh, against almost anything. You know, almost if you're a farmer, you can insure against the risk that bad weather is going to reduce, affect your crop for a year. Yeah. So, and uh, so there are as, I'm not going to say an infinite, but al you can insure almost a any, any, any risk you will find. I'm sure you will find a, an insurer <laughs> who is willing to, to, to insure against <laughs> yes. that risk. Yes. So, uh, and, 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 and the, the whole purpose is that with insurance, it uh, reduces your risk or it transfers the risk to yeah. someone else. And that gives you more confidence, for example, to undertake a project. Yeah. And somebody said that New York would not have been built without insurance, without insurance companies. Yeah. Because and when you go. Starting in the United States of America. Exactly. 
not, I not, think not it started that. even before that. Even before that. Uh, but the, the key point is that when you undertake a big project or a new company, uh, there's a certain level of risk that you're taking, and insurance can help you reduce that risk and give you more confidence and comfort to go forward. And talking to, about to the, the Democratic Republic of Congo is a country in the heart of Africa, you know, today with 26 provinces. Uh, what do you see at the first sight in terms of insurance in the RC? Today, uh, what exists today? To, yeah. Today, 80% uh, of the insurance premium insurance contracts that, that, that take place today in DRC are yeah. car, insurance. car insurance. So today, as you know, there's a state monopoly, SONAS, and 80% of their contracts are, are, are car insurance. Yes. On the other hand, uh, it's also believed that 90% of the insurance that happens in DRC today does not take place in the formal sector. Yeah. What this means is that, for example, and, and Jean-Luc will certainly comment on that later, yes. for example, when a mining company has to insure its assets, yes. some companies today, they go outside of the country to do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And w what are the main risks in the uh, insurance sector? Not only in DRC, we're talking about insurance. It's a, a concept. I'm a uh, mining company, so... Yeah. Uh, as uh, Domingo uh, told us, we yeah. have assets and the uh, staff uh, yeah. company. Yeah. And uh, our assets, the big risk is uh, industrial risk, uh, fire, robberies, yes. because we export products outside the country. Yeah. For that, we need a cover yeah. to uh, Lubumbashi till our client in yeah. China, uh, Europe, and so on. Without stopping you today, the, the liberalization is like, uh, you know, uh, a brief of life. Yeah. So, because we need new products uh, of in, uh, in, uh, insurance products, we need, we need new policies because yes. now, as uh, Domingo said, we have 80% of car insurance, you see. Yeah. We, we haven't uh, a lot of, uh, uh, from Sonas, we don't have uh, any yes. products to cover all the risks we, uh, we that's why the liberalization is something for, vitally important to for us. Yes, we uh, we will, we will have uh, new products yes. and uh, surely yes. uh, potential uh, new prices because now it's a little bit difficult. To, we have a fronting yes. through uh, insurance uh, from uh, Europe, yes. but normally if we got directly in Congo that company, so we will have better prices. Yes, and there is a matter of trust as well, you know. Uh, with uh, foreign countries, you know, which are trustworthy, Congolese people will be going, well, you know, to not sure. only because professionalism is an uh, international standard. Yes. Right? So if you got that company, we yeah. can have also a Congolese company. But we, for us, yes. as company, we need professionalism yes. people in uh, working in that sector. Yes, but uh, you know, doing business in challenging locations requires unique management skills. Is DRC a challenging location? Or yeah, is for that. Yeah. Yeah, and what should be done to, uh, to, to avoid that? What uh, should be done to, you know, to, to do a good business in the Democratic Republic of Congo without problem? We know that there are a lot of obstacles on the ground. But what should be done to Well, if, if, to if, avoid? I, if I may step in here, yes. um, I think the privatization of the, the liberalization of the insurance sector certainly helps yes. because it allows companies to actually uh, concretely and uh, successfully prevent uh, and protect themselves in terms of buying insurance because yes. at the moment a lot of companies invest in the DRC and they don't have the adequate mechanism to actually securely protect their assets from fires, yes. from floods. I mean, just look at today, yes. uh, the amount of flooding in, uh, in Kinshasa and yes. the amount of rain. Uh, if you've got, a, a, for example, an a import company yes. uh, and you've taken out a loan from the bank and you've bought a lot of cargo yes. and you're willing to sell that in the DRC, well, what happens with the rain this morning if you don't have insurance? Your cargo is yes. lost. Yeah. Uh, so there are certain difficulties and challenges uh, to investing in the DRC, but insurance is an area where it, it creates some sort of protection it, with yes. the liberalization of the market. Well, and do you feel very welcome in DRC? About Certainly. Your, I was I'm going to operate easily without problem. Uh, well, we, we hope to be um, operating here uh, next year uh, with yeah. the liberalization of the insurance market. Um, just from my personal experience, I was in Angola for four years before this, and the Congolese are certainly a lot more friendly than the uh, Angolans. Yes. Um, more friendly. More <laughs> friendly. <laughs> <laughs> when you be in Angola, you say Angola is... 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just um, kidding. Yeah. But in terms of you know access with government, government are very open to have meetings with us. They're, they yeah. seem to be very uh, progressive and very uh, excited about the change in the insurance sector. Yes. I mean, just two weeks ago, with Valerie and with colleagues from Ernst and Young, we were in uh, Belgium with the uh, Minister of State Planning and the Minister of Economy, and they were very yeah. open and very uh, progressive in terms yes. of uh, the ease of access of discussion and also the thoughts about the future insurance sector. Yeah. So yes, we feel very welcome in the DRC. Yeah. And what's the particularity of DLC uh, for uh, somebody who wants to invest in the insurance sector? Well, for us... You are an expert, you know. Well, we, um, for our group has invested in a number of African uh, insurance markets before, and the DRC certainly is very exciting for us um, because there is no uh, real insurance market in the current in the current setup. As, as Lindsay pointed out, 80% of the insurance is motor insurance. Yes. There's a huge, you know, 90% of the market is the informal sector. Yes. So we see a great opportunity in creating a mechanism to formalize that informal sector. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bluntly, bluntly and bluntly. Everything is under control. Everything is definitely under control in this program. As you can see, this bluntly is very good. As people who are participating in the program are experts. They're really knowledgeable about insurance matters. As the saying goes, quote, don't teach your grandmother to stack eggs. And quote, from time immemorial, nobody has eaten omelette without breaking eggs. That's why we must polish up economic strategies in order to skyrocket. Do you have any ideas about economic development and welfare? Join us in this program. That's our motto, our slogan. Stick around. We'll be back after the break. Find out. I'm back. Bluntly. Uh, down on the ground. One is you need to do everything local, even if you think globally. It means that you don't have to have a network Blossly, blossly, and blossly. Growth be considered as a panacea concerning a development. Economic growth in the Congo is on the paper, but it's not the reality. There is um, evidence, especially among students, people who are graduating. You can see. It may be strong, but people who are dealing with it. This is the problem. Or white people are not. Bluntly, we vanish your brother. From time immemorial, nobody has eaten homelet without bringing eggs. That's why we must the polish of economic strategies in order to skyrocket. Do you have any ideas about economic development and welfare? Join us in this program. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Everything is under control. Keep in touch. Bluntly is very nice. In DRC, Bluntly is an obligation. Bluntly is exciting. Bluntly is my passion. Whatever you are, what's Bluntly? Bluntly with an Italian Romania. Sing to Bluntly. English is the reality in DRC. Bluntly, Bluntly and Bluntly. Everything is under control. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I would like to come back to you. Yeah, now we're going to focus on you know the particularity of uh, each company because you are representatives of uh, several companies. Let's talk about yours. Shall I start? What is uh, it? Well, Orbis is an insurance broker. Yeah. Uh, what is an insurance broker? It's an intermediary between a client and an insurance company. Mm. So today we are active. We have a SONAS license, um, which means that uh, we work 100% uh, compliant. Compliant is a very uh, important word. Uh, we would um, meet a client, an industry, uh, that would require to be insured by a, a foreign insurance company with a A rating, for example, Standard Poor's or Fitch, whatever. We would then um, find the best quote from those insurance company, uh, find out whether the, 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 the capital insured are, are relevant, yes. and then go to Sonas and ask Sonas to front the insurance policy. Yes. That's true that the added value of SONAS on that mechanism is not very high, yes. but at least we legalize uh, the, the contract. Yes. There is VAT on it, and uh, the contract is official and, and, non and formal in Congo. Yes. Now, um, we face uh, a competition today, and Lindsay uh, underlined that, uh, we face a competition of brokers that are not registered in yes. Congo. 
because of some weaknesses of Sona's uh, brokers and clients decided to not be insured through this mechanism, yes. which sometimes can be more expensive than dealing direct directly with a foreign insurance company. Yes. But we do believe that uh, Orbis uh, uh, took the right decision uh, to work compliance and uh, in order to get the license, the new license as broker license. in the future market next year. Yes. Because we believe that the regulator uh, will not easily register broker that have been working yes. out of the compliancy uh, yes. the, last, the last years. Will you be happy to work with the illegal broker? People don't have any license. No, <laughs> but we, we understand. We'll make sure that we, things we, are really good. We understand that if uh, a mining uh, company is, uh, is having an international broker get, that cannot access the market, yeah. it's quite un understandable that this company wants to work offshore. But they can front the policy and they, co they can work with local brokers yeah. uh, that have the capacity to front this policy. And at the same time, as um, Jean-Luc mentioned, Working with the local brokers can also decrease the price because we can, in a way, try to manage claims locally on behalf of those insurance companies. But still, uh, I'm very enthusiastic and very positive yeah. about the opening of the market because even if we can uh, work today, uh, we cannot work. Uh, we cannot be 100% efficient in yeah. an open market. We would be then 100% efficient. Yeah. But the fact of working with, you know, Sonas, you know, isn't it challenging? It's it's challenging. Is it going to be easy for it's, you to make, a, you know, no, your it's job it's rabbit? it's uh, it's challenging. But yeah. we have good relation with them. I think they understood the last months that they need to be more flexible to work with uh, brokers, international brokers, yeah. or, or either local. Um, we we do have uh, brokers, an association uh, represented at FEC Fédération des Entreprises du Congo, yes. where we defend the rights of those brokers, yes. and and we do have uh, appointments with with uh, Sonas Managements in order to explain uh, our, 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 our requirements in terms of uh, yeah. uh, managements and quotes and things like that. But yeah. but I do believe that uh, uh, Sonas understood that they need also uh, to restructure themselves yes. and, and the that's restructuring of the company. Sonas to restructure inside. themselves yeah. and, and that's why they, they also they are also keen to listen to us with our experience, with yes. our background coming from other countries. Yes. Good, you're right. Yeah. And uh, what about yours, your so company? EY, What's going on? So Ernst & Young, also known as EY. We actually uh, present in uh, over 150 countries and we employ 210,000 people across the world. Wow. So we've been around for about 200 years now. 200. And uh, how many are you going to employ in DRC? That's the best question. To you. Today, <laughs> today in DRC, we yeah. have a team of 55 people. 55. So when, Congolese well, ones. 95 percent of them are, are Congolese. I'm one of the few non-Congolese <laughs> non uh, yeah. in the company. Yeah. So what what does EY actually do? Uh, we're not an insurance company. Yeah. We are a professional services company. So we provide services yeah. to the private and to the public sector. Then, yeah. Now the sorts of services we provide, we provide uh, external auditing and accounting services. We provide tax and legal advice, and we provide consulting services to the public sector as well as to the private sector. Now, what does that mean in, as far as insurance is concerned? For example, we, we help set up regulators, government regulators. We help the government in terms of uh, setting up their regulators, yes. defining the regulations. Uh, and for the private sector, we help our clients and partners to set up their business, to define their business plans and to deliver their projects yeah. on time, on budget. So we, we also provide training. And then uh, afterwards, we co come once they're up and running, we come yeah. and help them. We, we audit their accounts. Yes. And depending on what, what, what their, their, their actual needs are. So yeah. our role is really to accompany uh, the economic development of the countries yeah. and the communities where, where we operate, which yeah, is but why. but the problem, you, you, you talked about uh, auditing. Now, in Africa, many, you know, companies don't like, you know, <laughs> professional auditing companies. How are you going to deal with uh, Well, it's a, nece it's a necessary evil. Yeah. Uh, it's not so evil because, actually, the, the reason you have external auditing is to make sure yeah. that the, there are proper internal controls in place and that yeah. the financial reports are reliable. Yeah. So that's necessary because you don't, because when you're, it's a new Looking culture at for the, you know, Congolese companies. And it's true, it's true that the auditing uh, 
accounting and auditing professions are also, and the regulation is also being updated here, here in DRC, but, yes. you know, audits have existed for many years. Some of the firms that are here have been here for more than 40 years. Yes. So, yes, uh, the culture needs to be strengthened, but uh, certainly international companies and, and, and many others uh, are increasingly used, used to auditing. There are international auditing standards. Yes. And, and, in fact, the majority of our clients are local companies, not just international companies. Yes. So, there is a, so auditing, auditing is a good thing. Yeah, thank you. And Jack Amin, what's going on about insurance? Jack Amin, do you also do want to create something related to oh, next year will be very big for idea? us because uh, we plan to have two new plants in yeah. uh, for to increase our production so yes. uh, in uh, for us will be next year will be a very big mm -hmm. and also we have a lack of uh, electrical uh, power in Katanga yes 500 megawatt we need and uh, Jikaman plan to build himself yes. in power plant. a power plant in Luena uh, using our coke uh, mine in Luena. Yes. Instead to use it to making cement, we we'll yes. use it to make electrical power. Yes. For, for us, uh, and we must, we can't imagine one second to, to build two plants and a central uh, without, without having, having insurance, insurance for that. Yes. I'm sure that tomorrow, uh, next year, yeah. uh, we'll, ha we'll spend our time in uh, uh, making uh, good and new insurance policies. Are you willing to, to face the, the rivalry with uh, you know, international companies? Do you think that US will, will also be successful in terms of uh, professionalism? Yeah, because uh, we, are, we must learn uh, new uh, skills. So yes. that for us will be a, a, a new challenge and very interesting yes. with. Yeah, in Democratic Republic of Congo, people do not rely on you know, local, you know, local companies. What will you do to change that way you're thinking? But, uh, please, uh, for me, uh, I do my study in uh, Europe, and yes. uh, I see the international uh, standard. I'm not uh, uh, city, I'm not country, yes. because we must have uh, new standards, and yes. why not uh, to, to look after, after uh, outside? Yes. And Jacamine is a big company. I know that you, you work in partnership with the government. Yes. You know, are there any kind of, uh, you know, interferences, you know, from uh, the government about what you'll be doing? How to... The new code is yes, clear. That. The new code is clear. We must cover all, all the risks. Yes. And so uh, if locally we don't find uh, uh, skills, we must look after uh, and uh, outside. And for the time being, are you allowed to do what you were talking about? Yeah. yeah. And do you have means? Means, money. Do you have money available to do that oh. job, probably? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's yes. another part of That's the master. Yes. Yes. But I think we got it. We got yeah. it. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> Rupert. Thank you, Anisant. Um, ICE is an African-focused um, insurance group. Uh, yeah. uh, just to give a short history, we're not quite as 200,000 employees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not yet. Less not than yet. that. <laughs> uh, Ten years in the DRC, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, yeah. we, we began in Mozambique in 1997 by creating one of the first private insurance companies. The yeah. uh, Mozambican insurance industry was very different in 1997 to what it is like now. Yeah. Uh, then in 2005, we were the first private uh, insurance company licensed in Angola yeah. and thereafter in Ghana as well. We've subsequently had uh, insurance investments in, uh, in Sao Tome, uh, yes. Namibia and South Africa. The focus of the group, we actually arrived in the DRC in 2012, um, oh, wow. but we have not done any business in the DRC because we yes. do not have a license and we want to do things properly only once we're incorporated. Yeah. We did not want to create up a brokerage in the short term. We did not want to operate as a reinsurance company in the short term. We are purely sat here to research and understand what is happening in the DRC yes. and position ourselves correctly uh, with the correct staff, the correct team, yes. uh, and the correct knowledge of how the country works for the next year yes. uh, when we can begin uh, actually investing uh, in terms of in incorporating an insurance company. So the project, the works we've been doing is building up relationships with the government and training. We've begun training in the DRC and we want to do a lot more yeah. and we will do a lot more once we can incorporate ourselves. Yeah. In at first country. sight you look really determined, you know. To yes, to be a great uh, not, not at first sight. <laughs> Uh, give us 300 sites. What you will um, be doing to, to meet your clients and uh, your client needs and expectations? Well, um, you know, uh, we are we are an African-focused group. Um, I'm from Zimbabwe, but 
the, the group generates local insurance companies yes. uh, with uh, international money. So if I can give you a scenario, in Angola, we created uh, the largest uh, private insurance company, which had a turnover of $210 million yeah. in uh, 2013. All in that company, we had a team of about 160 to 180 staff. Yes. Um, of that, we only had three expats. The rest was an Angolan team. And that's a model which we wanted recreate in the DRC. How um, many people are going to employ in DRC? Well, it depends on our success in the country. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, we, we have great uh, great vision and great expectations for our insurance yes. success, but I can't firmly give you a number <laughs> because yeah. it depends on whether we get a license next year as well. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bluntly, bluntly and bluntly. Everything is under control. I'm delighted. Today's bluntly is different from others, I'm telling you. As we're talking about insurance, you know, there is nobody in the world who can move, you can, you know, become a, an insurer without uh, having, you know, expertise, like people I have here, who know everything about insurance. They are experts, I'm telling you, you know. A journey of 1,000 miles begins with one step in the Democratic Republic of Congo. If we need to move the country forward, we must start by, you know, insurance success. That's, you know, the best deal from, uh, from, from now on, I'm telling you. You know, from time immemorial, nobody has it normally without breaking eggs. That's why you must polish up economic strategies. That's really an obligation in the Republic of Congo. Otherwise, the country will move from bad to worse. Something really, you know, uh, unbearable. We must work hard to move the country forward. Apart from Blandly, don't forget that we have an English program called uh, Newscast. That's the second one, apart from Blandly. Find out. From now on, English program has become mandatory on television. Watch Newscast and you will be knowledgeable. Newscast with Anise Yomboranya. Newscast with Anise Yomboranya. Thanks for watching and goodbye from King Charles. Keep in touch. I would like to emphasize something else which is important. The last one, no, we're going to conclude the program. But talk about mindset. Mindset. And uh, mindset here means what, you know, Congolese way of thinking, of doing things when it comes to the insurance sector. I think there is a job which must be done about it. What should be done to, to well, change Congolese mindset? You're absolutely right. Uh, the mindset about insurance today is not existing. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's uh, say it clearly. Uh, I'm, um, I'm, I'm having, uh, I, have, I have the chance to be a lecturer in a, in a university today and um, there is a bachelor in bank insurance at uh, Ecole Supérieure de Management de Kinshasa. We have about 10 students in class. Uh, we need uh, all, all around the table to educate people about this sector yeah. because it has to be attractive. It's, uh, in, um, if I compare um, a region which I know very well, uh, the Brussels region, uh, the insurance and bank uh, sectors represent about 20 to 30 percent of the job uh, of this region. Could you imagine what it could represent for Kinshasa yeah. in 10 years? So definitely we need to create a mindset about insurance. We need to emphasize uh, the importance of insurance. Um, there will be an issue uh, for companies in the coming months and coming years, yeah. it, it will be the war of talents because uh, finding a good staff uh, yeah. with a good knowledge of insurance is an issue. I know uh, reports and other companies well uh, okay. are well placed to recruit <laughs> to recruit people. Yeah. As a broker, uh, we do work with less staff than an insurance company, but we still face uh, that problematic. So uh, there is also um, a, a role of these future players in the sector, yeah. which is uh, basically uh, to push hard uh, all those new staff to study, work hard, in order to integrate this, uh, this expertise of insurance, which you, which, which you just mentioned in your introduction. Yeah. So mindset is important, uh, uh, and the insurance mindset, as I said in, in the introduction, will also bring a lot of things to, the, to, to Congo. Having a, a, um, an open uh, insurance sector will secure the country as well. Uh, being sure that uh, when you have an accident, your family will get uh, some revenues yes. that secure yourself to take risk as an entrepreneur. So that is a, that is a job uh, of, of, uh, of the future players, is to marketize the importance of, uh, the, importance of uh, the insurance industry. Yes, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, as people who are a little bit skeptical, what should it be at the beginning? Well, well, just 
making conference explaining uh, you know insurance company they do have a good uh, marketing budget you know, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure they will come in, come back to the RTNC to explain about their products yes. in order for Congolese uh, to not be skeptical mm. and giving examples uh, and how to not to be skeptical yeah. is basically when you will see that those insurance company will pay claims yes. when there will be a major fire yeah. uh, of a million dollars and that you will see that uh, the day after uh, the expert the loss adjuster will be already on site to set yeah. up the claim uh, that I think that will help people yes. to understand why it is important yes. for those companies uh, to be able to to start from the day two uh, uh, the business uh, operation without interruption yes yeah, good if, You're I right. can, if yeah. I can add to, to, to this point it's clear that the the culture, we should not underestimate the, the cultural aspect. So both in terms of people being willing to go into insurance as a career, yeah. uh, and secondly also the population who today yeah. do not trust insurance because of historical reasons. Yeah. So we have some work to do, all of us, in terms of educating uh, yes. the population mm -hmm. as well so that they can understand that you know, what's the benefit of insurance yeah. and what they're going to get out of it. And I think it's also important that, that companies actually offer products which are tailored for the needs of the population here. Absolutely. Because, uh, for example, in some countries like Kenya, you see a rise in uh, what they call micro-insurance. Micro -insurance. So it's insurance products for low-income families. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have to pay a big premium every month, but they can see that they can see the benefit. So, so it's important. That Are you going to do that in the ASEAN? I'm not an insurance <laughs> company, but I'm more than happy to advise my yes. <laughs> distinguished thugs <laughs> here. Yes. And I'm sure that uh, I, I'm pretty sure that Rupert yeah. will be willing to do that. Yes, yes. Uh, why doesn't DRC take into consideration, you know, uh, insurance in the uh, education sector? I think it's largely historical because of the the, the last f the situation that DRC has had in the last 50 years, but or even or even before that, yeah. and well, it's also it's supply and demand, but also many young students, as as Valerie mentioned, were less. I mean, yeah. today there are 10 in the classroom. It's already good that, that, that there are 10, and and we also have the pleasure to be to be teaching there. Uh, I think it's a question of education. They need to be encouraged, and they need to be explained, and. And that's, that's the work we, we all have to do. Yes. Uh, and when, when they see new jobs also being advertised, asking for insurance, asking for, for banking. Yeah. Uh, b because uh, if you look at other, uh, other economies, uh, the size of the insurance market, uh, I think the average worldwide is, uh, you take the total insurance premium, so the, the total income of the insurance sector, it's about 6% of the gross domestic product worldwide. Yes. Six percent. So Six here percent. in DRC, it's something like zero point four percent. Yeah. But but the potential is there. So it can be quite a big mm. economic sector in yeah. itself. Plus, it's important as well for growth and development for the reasons that that my colleagues already outlined in terms of giving more trust to to develop business and projects. Yeah. So potentially that can be quite a big sector. But we have to explain that and 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 make it happen so yeah, explain you it to, to the people working here since 2012 do you, do you rely on congolese people you know do, do young congolese people inspire you much confidence in terms of manpower absolutely in fact ey have been here th since 2007 yeah seven. Uh, okay, I, I, seven. I i arrived in 2011 and and yeah. and, and uh, took over uh, the management of, of the firm here in 2012 yeah. absolutely because our our uh, you cannot succeed by having a company only with uh, expatriates. It doesn't work. It doesn't work and it's not sustainable. Absolutely. And uh, so absolutely, that's what we do. We try and se recruit and select the, the best talent, train them, and, and we do the same in every country where we are, yeah. so that afterwards they, 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 they are the ones who are the future leaders and the leaders of the firm in all the countries where we operate. And I think uh, Rupert mentioned that uh, ICE has the, 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 same, the same model as well. Of course. So, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Jekami, what, what should you do to change the mindset of uh, you know the population, people who are working there? Uh, for example, we have uh, from uh, August till uh, November, we have our budget meeting in yeah. Jekamine. Yeah. Also, it's a struggle to make changing in mind that yeah. paying insurance is not uh, a loss because yeah. from how the management <laughs> paying insurance is a loss. Yeah. But and uh, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> My, uh, my job is uh, slowly to get a new uh, vision and to yes. put it uh, like an investment. 
that's uh, uh, what I'm making from 20 years I'm trying to do. And uh, How long is it going to take for you to convince people there and change their way of doing things? We uh, need to put, you know, a new software in our brain, say, you know. As uh, <laughs> Vincent says, yes. because if you lose your cellular, yeah. if you can have a policy and you get it a new one uh, the new day one. after, yes. I think people can say, okay, yeah, I can send, I can pay uh, one dollar a week or one dollar a month yes. to cover my cellular yes. and to get another one if uh, they be stolen uh, in the street. That's yeah. a, yes. another to change mind. Yes. But also, from all the company to do uh, is not. We must have mandatory policy. We yes. must have investment policy that yes. uh, I think uh, can be changed in all the uh, companies. Do in you Congo. hope for a better future? About I'm sure. Sector. I'm sure. In the ASA. I'm sure. Theoretically, or oh, you are you're sure that uh, sure, sure, <laughs> things uh, are going uh, to work no, on no. the ground? Okay. Yes. Let's talk about capacity building. I think that's the most important thing here. Well, in, insurance. In terms of capacity yeah. building, yeah. firstly, uh, for us to generate uh, capacity and interest in insurance, we need to get that interest going in insurance. And for an insurance yeah. company, that's easily done by us paying claims. We yeah. actually get trust. But in terms of capacity, in terms of people, uh, it's on a training basis. Um, I, the group uh, outsources training and has an internal uh, insurance academy. Uh, with Valerie, we've uh, we've begun. We in February we begin training at the, uh, the next the, February, in 2016, um, at at the same college. Um, yeah. But in the interim, we're providing our own training sessions. This next week, we're providing training at two universities. We're having training sessions with two banks and with government agencies. Yeah. Um, so capacity begins on training, but it's not just ourselves. As soon as we have competitors in the market doing it, yes. it builds up in the insurance industry. It builds up uh, the capabilities in the market. Yes. Um, so it's on a training basis and for actual people to have trust in the insurance uh, industry, which comes about from insurance companies actually paying claims. Yes. Well, what's the best way of dealing with uh, disaster victims in DRC? Dealing with disaster victims is handling claims fairly. Um, yeah. You know, obviously if they're insured, uh, yeah. if we, we can deal with them. Uh, we can't just... <laughs> 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 um, yes. But no, it's, 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 it, at the moment there is a, a gap because when people have a claim um, yeah. in the local setup, it doesn't seem... Uh, that claims are handled correctly so people don't have the trust and the faith and aren't treated fairly. Yeah. Um, for us, that's absolutely inte integral that uh, people are insured as per their policies yes. and they get fair, swift uh, uh, claims paid and, uh, and assistance. Good. We're going to conclude by just you know, 20 minutes. Each one of you can get the message across. I don't know any detail you have forgotten. 20 seconds. No. Everybody to conclude the program. Well, uh, an important message, uh, and it, it, it's also related to the mindset, uh, yes. opening the markets will definitely decrease premiums. That's also a strong message I'd like to give. You yes. have to imagine that when a company like uh, Jekamin is insured, maybe through South African market today, yes. uh, there is a need of a loss adjuster to come from South Africa, yes. uh, go to the hotel, uh, spend one week making a report, yes. Uh, well, there is a minimum premium to cover those expenses. Uh, opening the market uh, will be able to give uh, uh, from those offshore markets a mandate to those local insurance companies like ICE yes. to take care of those local issues, to take care of basically printing out a good contract with yep. good conditions, to take care of translating uh, the conditions from the offshore markets into the local market, and to take care to handle the claim. So definitely one message I'd like to give also is that it will have an impact on the budget of those companies and those individu individuals that are currently insured. Yeah. Okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, we, we already outlined, um, we will hire staff. Uh, so I'd like also to say that when market will be open, yes. there is a big potential in front of us. We Why will Congolese hire. people? Congolese people, of course. Yeah. We are not here. I mean... I, I'm, I would be really uh, uh, happy if we can all together here transfer our knowledge yes. uh, to those Congolese staff. Absolutely. Look at the banking sector today. Yeah. How many Congolese staff you have in the board uh, of, those, of those banks? Yeah. Well, that's exactly how the insurance sector okay, will be in, in five or ten years. Good. 20 seconds. 20, 20 seconds. seconds. So yeah. the, the law that was voted on 17th of March uh, 2015 for yeah. le Nouveau Code des Assurances yes. comes into effect on the 17th of March 2016. Yes. So that's four months away. Yeah. So what happens then is that uh, the market is then open. 
uh, obviously there's not a lot of time left. There are still some steps in the meantime that need to happen, like the setting up of the regulator. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we all believe, and it's clear that uh, the reform of the insurance sector is very key for the further development Absolutely. and prosperity of DRC. So, and it's up to all of us to to, to make that happen. Uh, we believe in it, and uh, I cannot uh, emphasize enough how important and how vital that's going to be for this economy, but it's important that we do it right as well because the international community are looking at us. Yeah. And, and if that's done properly, and I'm sure it will be, that's going to really boost the, the, the economy in DRC. Good. Uh, the, we can say uh, the final uh, meeting that uh, the new uh, insurance sector will help all the companies to, to face the risk because now, as this uh, JCAMI is not alone yeah. in mining sector yeah. and he must also cover uh, his products better yes. and, and uh, we'll get more uh, clients if they're sure that all our products will arrive yes. in safe condition. Now yes. it's not clear because uh, sometimes we don't find the real products in the, sa in the good moment. Good. Good. Um, uh, two, uh, two quick points. Firstly, uh, to follow on what Lindsay is saying, it's incredibly important that the insurance sector is finalized so we can invest in the DRC in 2016. Uh, as mentioned, we've been sitting, uh, researching and understanding the country since 2012, and we're very excited um, about our future investment. Yeah. And the second aspect is in terms of capacity building, in terms of people. Uh, there are uh, Congolese people out there with insurance knowledge, and we'd like them to contact us. Um, yeah. But we also, for those who are studying at the moment, look at the uh, insurance potential in a different eye. It's no longer just getting a job with Sonas. It's a possibility of getting a job with other companies which are investing in the insurance industry. So look for it as a future place for employment. Good. Good. Bluntly, bluntly, and bluntly. Everything is under control. Everything is definitely under control in this program, as you can see. You know, all is well. That ends well. Thanks for watching, and goodbye from Kinshasa. We are Democratic Republic of Congo. All the best, and keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Roger. All of you. Thank yeah, you. wonderful. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Keep in touch. Keep in touch.